thank you for joining us on today's episode of Tax Matters as we go straight to business with our tax education clinic. What you need to do to file and pay for companies' income tax and associated taxes as highlighted last episode. Of course, it is common knowledge now that these tasks have been made as easy as ABC with the introduction of Tax Pro Max by the FIRS. How does Tax Pro Max work? All over the world, tax administration is being automated and FRS has also taken the lead uh, trying to automate our tax processes from end to end. And uh, the name of the solution is Tax Pro Max. Uh, a part of the canons of taxation is convenience. Uh, this solution will make tax payment very easy for our taxpayers, where you can file, you can register, you can do your filing, you can do your payment. Anything you need to do about you know, tax uh, filing, you, that can be done at the comfort of your house. The Tax Pro Max solution is a proprietary software for tax administration and it's developed in-house. It's managed by staff of FRS to address some challenges that our legacy system had. First of all, we wanted to get a clean data. Now, working with a clean data will help you to achieve better goals. We had so many duplications and mix-ups in our legacy data and we said, see, we're working with e-systems now worldwide and with the COVID-19 coming around it opened our eyes to see that we can actually make doing business a lot easier in Nigeria hence the tax Act became active so we start with the registration process now being that CAC is the governing body for corporate registrations in Nigeria we validate all registrations with the Corporate Affairs Commission. So if you have issues that were not settled properly, like you're not active in the corporate um, CSC platform, you might not be able to be registered on the Tax Pro Max platform. Now, all you need to do is go and settle your annual returns and get yourself active. Now, you can be running a business in Nigeria and not be properly registered in Nigeria. So that's why you have to be duly registered by the CAC to be able to be captured on the Tax Pro Max system. Now the Tax Pro Max system with the bid to give you eyes to what you're doing has a platform where we give you your own login details. So whatever your tax account is, you have eyes to it as well as the service. So we're not doing anything behind your back. If you're being given an assessment, you're seeing the assessment, you agree to the assessment or disagree to the assessment on the system. Now, this can be done from anywhere once you have internet connectivity. Another thing the Tax Pro Max does, it, it organizes your records. So you will not be looking for registration records in your ledger. You, it will be in your taxpayer details. So the home page of the Tax Pro Max platform is categorically labeled for ease of going around it. Now, a lot of us have had issues of using wrong rates, using wrong data, and Tax Pro Max has come to synchronize all of this. Some people will say, ah, what is done in Alaba is not what is done in a VI. Right now, there's synergy. What you see in VI is what you see in Abuja, is what you see in Alaba. So nobody is going to favor Alaba more than VI or the other way around. One of the things Tax Pro Max does is it removes the human interface. It is you and it goes straight to CBN. It's so beautiful. There's no middleman. So it's actually cheaper on the taxpayers because it takes away the middleman thing. You log in, you file your taxes, you pay online. Or if you are still used to the manual way, you go to your bank with your cash and make the deposit. Automatically, 
it shows in your ledger that you have paid for these taxes. So when they come out for monitoring and they are knocking on doors of shop owners, they look at you, ah, this man paid. He paid sins. You know, just looking at probably the tablet they are holding, they can tell that you've paid your taxes. Also, a lot of us have had issues with getting our receipts and credit notes. With the Tax Pro Max system, at any time, wherever you are, you can actually log in and download your receipts or your credit notes and use for whatever business you want to use it. Also, the tax clearance certificate, it has made it easy to track the time limits. When we say 24 hours, we mean 24 hours. Now, if you're not issued within 24 hours, you'll be given a reason why you were not issued. So it, it makes it beautiful and open for both the tax authority and the taxpayer. Of course, Tax Pro Max, like every system, is work in progress. One of the challenges we have as a service is we, we're trying to ensure that there's ease of doing business. But as our stakeholders, one of the reasons we're here educating you is the fact that you've actually not accepted the solution wholeheartedly. Okay, so we need you to understand that if you don't accept the solution, you wouldn't understand the solution. And if you don't understand the solution, you will make costly mistakes. When I say costly mistakes, you'll make mistakes that will lead you to penalties that you would have avoided if you took your time to understand the solution. Now, the service has made provision for self-service stations at our individual tax offices, and we have focal offices that you can speak to. So if you have any issues, if the officers in the front desk are not answering you, you have the right to speak to the tax controller. There's no tax controller that will tell you I won't speak to you. It's your right to be served right. So you need to exercise your right and request to speak to the tax controller. Get your complaints. Now, most of us come complaining verbally. Now, the problem with verbal complaints is your word against my word. So you need to document all your complaints and address them to the tax controller. Wherein it is beyond the tax controller, he or she will escalate the matter to the GL for any of the groups, either the digital and innovative support group where the tax pro max is domiciled or the director for, for the um, general tax operation groups, your issues will be addressed. Okay, but there are some issues that can be settled at the tax office level. There are some issues that have to be escalated. We also have challenges of filing and payments. Now, I would like to explain that filing must be done on or before your due date. If that is not done, penalties will accrue. Management has put in a lot of infrastructure to support the system, and I can stand here proudly to say that in the last four months, the system hasn't had reasonable downtime because management has supported the system to function for my good and for your good. Also, if you have such problems, that is why the self-service stations have been put in place. Walk into the tax office, they will assist you and put you in the right path to get your filing and payment done. Now, you cannot give an officer your credit card to pay for you. We don't allow it. So instead, they'll print the PNR, the payment reference number, and give to you to go and do your transactions. You can also pay online via Remita. Some of our banks also support the Remita app. So if you log into your banking platform and it does support payment via Remita, all you need to do is pay taxes. And then you put in the payment reference number and it pulls up your company details. Once you proceed from there, your tax ledger is automatically credited within 24 hours. Mrs. Owen spoke about deadlines. Yes, 
there are filing deadlines for different taxes. For value added tax, filing and remittance of all value added taxes collected by you must be done later by the 21st day of the month following the month of transaction. For companies' income tax, filing and payment become due later by the end of the sixth month following the company's accounting year earned. There is also filing deadline for personal income tax, which of course is payable to the state internal revenue services across the country, as well as to the federal inner revenue service in the case of officers and men of the armed forces, staff of Ministry of External Affairs, policemen and women, and non-resident individuals, that is, non-Nigerians who do business in Nigeria for more than 183 days in a year. Pay as you earn deductions taken from the monuments of paid employees must be remitted by the agent, talking about the employer now, latest by the 10th day of the following month. This is done on a monthly basis. For the second leg of personal income tax, which is direct assessment, the personal income tax is due later by the 31st of March of every year for activities of the enterprises and or enterprise owner in the preceding year. There is more. Now, when it comes to tax clearance, Tax Pro Max has eliminated the manual process and giving you um, a, an opportunity to be able to view and download your tax clearance at any time and anywhere you want to. This is also one of the mediums the, the uh, management has put in place to ensure that you know the validity of your tax clearance. In fact, on your tax clearance, there's a barcode on it. If you use a smartphone and you scan the barcode, it will immediately connect you to the FRS system and tell you if that tax clearance is valid or not with the details, company name and all of that. So nobody can swindle you and say, oh, I brought a tax clearance. You can verify. These are things management has put in place through the Tax Pro Max to make doing business good for you. Thank you. I'm a very busy man. My business involves a lot of traveling and I interface with lots and lots of people and organizations. Tax compliance used to be a big drag on my business. It was time consuming and very costly. But now, no more. Introducing the FIRS Tax Pro Max, the truly fully end-to-end -end tax administration solution for companies' income tax, value-added tax, petroleum profits tax, and all other tax types. For fast, efficient, and convenient end-to-end -end tax experience, log on to www.taxpromax.firs.gov.ng. Tax Pro Max has turned things around for me. It is fast, user-friendly, and cost-effective. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Wow, that again was one of the offerings of the Tax Sensitization and Awareness Workshop for Alaba and Badagri tax jurisdictions in Lagos State, organized by the Alaba Micro and Small Tax Office of the FIRS under the leadership of Barisa Mrs. Cecilia Odibo. The paper presentation was followed by a highly stimulating question and answer session. Is thing free? Is it really free? If thing is free, why can't we assess it online? We are happy of the online filing which gave us time to file even on Saturday, Sunday, when the office is not opening, you do your filing. But the area now is that these hard copies, is it compulsory that we must submit it before the closing date of the filing? we are talking of paperless now do we still need to bring the hard copies to the tax office if it is yes is there a penalty on not bringing it on time you have filing your monthly returns VAT monthly returns on tax promise the DN is generated for you to go ahead to go and pay probably through remitters by the time the second day, they said the, same, the DM has expired. You have to regenerate another one again. What is FRS doing about it? We discovered that instrumental payment under the tax promise is only for current tax. I have a situation where there is a taxpayer that has not paid for, so, for a very long time. And I decided to bring him into the tax net. Now, unfortunately, 
those years that have expired according to the tax promise, but the money to pay under the self-assessment is not there. What is the FRS trying to do in order to ensure that the instrumental payment can be done and then tax can be paid? Because what they tell you is that the uh, tax promise has closed it. If it's not a current uh, period, there's nothing they can do about it. Are you supposed to pay VAT on a product you pay tax as you are clearing? And then when you are selling, you are asked to pay tax again. Are you supposed to pay tax two times? Third, the Alamba people mentioned the issue of Aboros. You spend, you pay 10,000 Naira per movement. And if you are delivering your goods, you may end up paying up to 30,000. In a month, you add it up, it's very high. Then, are you going to add this to cost of sales? And if you add it to the cost of sales, the tax people will be asking you receipt. How are you going to handle these issues? What we deal with is everything electronical. Now, I'm going to just use an instance so I can, I actually uh, relate my question. If I'm going to uh, sort for a project or a contract, I bid or give a quotation, which I call a PFI. And in my quotation, I will add up my VAT. Now, this client might give me my order, fine, but on giving me my order, deducts the VAT, which was actually initiated in my PFI. And this uh, client, on, on paying for this uh, job offer, I'll, the government would have deducted my withholding tax. Now I want to ask, do I still go ahead to pay for the VAT which was initially deducted as as at the point of this contract initiated. The tax officials in attendance rose up to the occasion by trashing out the areas of concern. But let me just say something on this input and output issue. You see, I'm sorry to use this word. Not all of us are sincere. That is the problem. It's a self-assessment, but not all of us are sincere. Because over the years, we have witnessed fictitious claims of imputes. That is why the service is a bit strict on it. Fictitious claims of imputes. For some of them, the input will even consume all the whole processes. So that is why we're a bit strict on it. But if you can prove it with documents, nobody is going to deny you. And in the nearest future, very soon, we're working on what we call the invoicing where only certified and genuine inputs you know can be used and claimed you know while, while, while computing to your final VAT so just be a little patient with us but on input there is no issue with that if they are genuine you will not be denied and that's why I, I emphasize on you having your proper documentations and you know record keeping and he also talked about tax pro enterprises and limited and all that we know what enterprises are, and we know what limited liability companies are. And for all of them, we have the kind of taxes that they pay. But for VAT is general. So if you're a limited liability company, you're now registered with the CAC, and we need to use your, uh, your RC number to validate you in order to avoid duplication like in the past when we were using the web portal. And for the enterprises we're working, with the MC to also use the NIN to validate so that we have, you know, one, one team for an individual, unlike in the past. But the fact that you're not a limited liability company, you're bound to pay certain taxes like the VAT while your income tax goes to the state. As an enterprise, you're also registered on the tax proof for the purposes of VAT. On the PRM, you see, the way this thing is, when it is on or before your due date, you can generate your PRN and it will not expire. If your accounting period is January to December, you have that six month grace as given to you by the government, isn't it? You can decide to generate your PRN from January down for six months till June and it will not expire. But if it is after your due date, it will expire for the purposes of generating penalty and interest. 
and tried, if you're due to file and pay your VAT on the 21st, generate that PRN on the 10th. It will be valid from that 10th up to the 21st. It will not expire. TCC and strict processes. You see, from the name, it is called Tax Clearance Certificate. A document given to you when you have paid up all your tax obligations. So what is happening is that that same taxpayer will not come to our office until and unless he needs his TCC. Normal. Because if you see the taxpayers, most of them, it is when they need this TCC that they cannot come to file and pay. That is prior to the introduction of the tax pro because they know they can get away with penalties and interest and all that. But what they do at the tax office based on the self-assessment regime are just basic checks, preliminaries. No in-depth arithmetic, you know, uh, what you call arithmetic correctness and all that. So, and it is a document that will give to you to testify that you have paid all your tax obligations. So I personally do not see anything wrong if we now try to scrutinize before we give it to you. Okay, someone also talked about installment payment. You see, it is the right of the taxpayer to pay in installment before his due date of filing. That is allowed. If you're due to file in June and you have 600,000 Naira to pay, for instance, you can decide without any hitch to pay 100 in January, 100 if you can do it instrumentally until the last due date. But what is important here by the Finance Act, I think it's 2021, that that last installment must be paid on or before that due date. If it crosses the due date on any installment, it generates penalty and interest. But on other assessments coming from maybe say audit or investigation, you can apply and there's a threshold of the TC, the coordinator, the GL and even the EC and we can give you installment payment approval and you pay an installment. But when it is a current filing, that installment was on or before. And because of the so many crimes we have been receiving, that's why we even magnanimously, like I stated earlier today, that we now extended the filing till August. If you could remember, last year it was extended up to December last year, if you could remember. Someone talked about whether TIN is free. Taxpayer's identification number is free of any charges. Absolutely free of any charges. I think where the problem is coming, you know, coming from the manual to semi-manual to an automated system, you can actually register and get your team online if you can upload the necessary documents. And that is why we always escalate all these our help desk numbers. If anybody demands for any gratification for giving you a TIN, escalate it, please. Because TIN is free of any charges. You don't pay anything. Someone talked about over deduction. You see, the paper I presented was on your rights and obligation. You have every right to claim for a refund of your withholding. So somebody said, if you over deduct that, why don't we charge, um, how did they even frame it? That when you are late, we charge you penalty and interest. Meanwhile, your withholding is with us or something like that. Nobody stops you from coming to ask for your refund. Nobody stops you. Because you have an option to either apply for those excesses to be refunded to you because withholding is an advanced payment of taxes. If you have been, if you have some withholding or maybe say a million naira, and at the end of the day, you probably have used just half of it, 500, to offset your CIT. The balance there of 500, by law, by your right, you can apply and be refunded back. Or you leave it to offset future liabilities that may come up. So nobody stops you from using that your credit note. And of course, in the same vein, if you are late, we will penalize you for being late, for delaying government's money. And these words of advice from the Deputy Vice President of the CITN. Uh, when a patient is sick, he looks for a doctor. When someone is in business and is a taxpayer, there's need for you also to patronize tax consultants. 
because more often than not, they will be the people to guide you. Like uh, the, those trading or in one form of business, your association can engage five, ten, depending on the number of the trade group. If you have traders that are, say, 50 in number, each one of them may not be able to pay consultants. You, the association can get five, you know, ten to service that group. And by so doing, you know, it will increase your level of compliance. That cannot be overemphasized. As we always counsel on this program, do not navigate the field unaided. Seek professional advice and that should come only from duly licensed and duly accredited tax practitioners. If you have enjoyed this episode, let us meet again on this same platform next week. It promises to be even bigger and better. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.